So in this video, I am going to analyze the software development data set. Um, here's the scenario, and these are the questions that I want to ask, that, that I want to answer based on my analysis. So the scenario, a large software developer wants to reduce the number of bugs in software modules. Some software modules must be developed faster than others due to deadlines which is a source of stress. The software developer decides to study the moderating effect that age has on the impact of stress on number of bugs. Uh, questions. Does stress have an impact on the number of software bugs? And if yes, does age moderate the impact of stress on the number of bugs? So I have three variables, measure stress, uh, of a software developer measured as blood cortisol concentration in milligrams per deciliter, age, age of the software developer measured in years, in bugs, number of bugs per 1,000 lines of code written by the software developer. And here's the data. So I have 700 data points. And... Uh, it's when I do an analysis like this, it's always a good idea to keep in mind the unit of analysis, which in, in this case is the software developer, meaning each row refers to data of a single software developer. I could have the soft, I, I could have the unit of analysis could have been the software development team, in which case each role would refer to maybe averages of a team, uh, but that's not the case here. The case, uh, here, each row refers to one single software developer. So for example, in this first, first row below the column names, uh, I have 219, that's a measure of stress in terms of cortisol levels in the blood, age, 23 years of age, and uh, this person has uh, 88 uh, bugs per 1,000 lines of code. So let me uh, read, so let me go open Warp PLS. Let me start by creating a project file. And I will create this project file with the same name as my data set. Get the, this is the data set, so I'm going to create my project file with the same name but the extension PRJ. Okay, now I will read uh, the data. So this is an Excel file, so I will click on open. When I go ahead and click on open, open uh, like this for an Excel file, usually it's the first sheet that is uh, read by the import wizard uh, by default, but I can change that if uh, I want the import wizard to use a different sheet. Uh, so as we can see here, the, f the first sheet is the one selected for for reading the data. If the data was in a second or third sheet, I would click on that one. So I can have the data set in different worksheets uh, in Warp PLS. But the default is the first sheet. So I'll click on Next, Finish. Here I have on my data, so it looks fine. No corruption. Now I will pre-process the data. No missing values. Now, zero variance problems are also taken care uh, of uh, at this stage. Zero variance uh, columns are columns where the value doesn't change in the entire column. So I'll click OK. Now I have my data here standardized. Now I will create my model. So the first question is whether stress 
affects performance in terms of number of bugs, right? So it'll create the latent variable stress with only one indicator and now bugs. So the first question will be answered by inspection of this link. And the other question in my uh, in my uh, file is scenario is does age moderate the impact of stress on number of bucks? So in order to test that, I will create I'll create a latent variable which will be age. And I will create a moderating link. So I'll create a moderating link between age and uh, the link between stress and bugs. And that's how I answer that question. So close my model. And here I will go to the settings. Since I have all of the in, uh, all of the latent variables are measured through a single indicator, I don't need to use any algorithm. I can use the simplest, which is robust path analysis. And since I want to conduct a linear analysis, I will change the default inner model analysis algorithm, which is the algorithm used to assess, to calculate the coefficients for the arrows, for the links. I will uh, set it to linear. I will save. Now I will run my analysis. And what these coefficients are telling me is that, yes, stress does influence the number of bugs. And it's a strong influence. Uh, the beta coefficient is 0.42. And age does influence uh, the, the, uh, the influence or the effect of stress on bugs. And this influence is negative, meaning that this relationship between stress and bugs um, goes down potentially to zero or, or become negative as age increases. That's essentially what it means, this moderating effect being negative. And this is a strong association as well. Now here we always check uh, the focal linearity variance inflation factors to see if there is any collinearity or if there is too much collinearity in my model, meaning that um, the variables, uh, if, the, if the numbers here are greater than 10 for any variable, that means that there is too much uh, collinearity in my model and that would distort the coefficients. As it turns out, all numbers are very low. They're low than 3.3, so I can be completely sure that there is no collinearity. And uh, the model creates a product variable for the calculation of that uh, moderating effect. So that extra variable is not shown in the model, but it, uh, it exists. It is in the background. And uh, it can affect collinearity levels, but it doesn't. It doesn't increase collinearity beyond uh, the level of 10, which, which would be uh, too, too high. So my answers to the questions are, does stress have an impact on the number of software bugs? Yes, it does. And if yes to the above, does age moderate uh, the impact of stress on the number of bucks. Yes, it does. Now, let's say I wanted to also assess whether age has an effect on stress and directly on bugs in addition to this indirect uh, effect via moderation. If age has a direct effect on, on bugs, I can, I can test this by changing my model and adding a few links to it. And I'll run my analysis again. 
And as you can see here, age has no effect on stress. The p-value is too high to be considered significant, and therefore our interpretation is that this effect doesn't exist. And same is true for this effect here, too small, uh, p-value too high, greater than 0 0.05, therefore we assume that this effect doesn't exist. So I can remove these two links. And I'll go back, remove them, because they don't need them. They are non-significant. So I'll go back to my uh, original model. I'll redo my analysis. Now, here we can actually visualize the direct effect and the moderating effect. So. Let's take a look at the direct effect of stress on bugs. So the relationship is linear. I could have um, graphs with uh, uh, point data points in unstandardized scales. I could have standardized scales. Uh, I could have this graph, uh, focus relationship graphs with segments. Uh, standardized scales, p-values, unstandardized scales. I could use this one uh, to get the the large beta for it. Uh, this 0.12 means that uh, for each one uh, increment in cortisol levels, uh, I would have uh, 0.12 more bugs per 1,000. In my data set, and this is uh, this is small because the the the, the measurement for cortisol levels um, would be uh, is is uh, is is quite uh, small, right? E each increment, but I could actually also s extrapolate and say that for each one hundred increment in cortisol levels as measured, we would have twelve points added. Uh, in bugs. Okay, now let's take a look at our uh, moderating effect graph. This is more interesting. So if I click on it, I get this graph here. And what we can clearly see, and we can even rotate the graph, so I can rotate left and uh, down or, or up. But look what's happening here. As we can see, and let me change this graph to unstandardized scales. So as we, we uh, move from young age to older age, we can see that for folks who are younger, the relationship between stress and number of bugs is steep. And then it becomes flat, and toward the end here, it even goes down to negative uh, for later ages. What this means essentially is that, or, or could, the interpretation here could be that older folks are better able to handle stress and not let stress uh, affect um, bugs, because uh, from our previous analysis, we know that age does not have an effect on stress. So younger age folks, they have stress. But apparently older folks are better at managing the impact that the stress has on the performance of their main uh, work, which is uh, software development. So that would be the interpretation of this. I have other graphs that I could use. Uh, this would be one of them, um, f uh, uh, focus graph, so I could actually see. And here I can actually change the splits. So this splits the sample in the middle. Uh, so for high age, for older folks, older than uh, the median age, we have a uh, uh, pretty much flat relationship, bordering negative between stress and bugs. And for low age, younger folks, we have a steeper relationship. And we can change the splits here. We can have, uh, we can split the sample into 20% uh, 
and and the uh, and eighty percent. So uh, here, uh, the low age would be twenty percent of the data set, or or twenty or the twenty percent younger folks. So we would we would have even a steeper relationship, and then we can split to eighty. So eighty percent younger, twenty percent older. So we have slightly different. So this would refer to the 20% oldest folks in the data set. And as we can see, the relationship is negative. So they're quite good at managing the impact uh, that stress has on the number of bugs. In fact, for them, more stress even makes their performance uh, better, apparently. So comparatively speaking to the younger folks. So this concludes this demo on the analysis of the software development data set.